labiaplasty and just get like a real honest experience of what it's like to have the surgery done to help other patients understand it. How long ago did you have your surgery? About three years ago. Yeah, it's been a while since we saw each other. Mm -hmm. And what would you say overall about the experience? Like how are you feeling now compared to before? So before my labiaplasty, I, I felt really insecure about my body. Um, it was like, it was difficult for me to be intimate with anyone because I just felt like, I just wasn't right. Like it just wasn't like a pretty beautiful flower to be looking at. <laughs> um, and I, I made an appointment with you. You were my actual, you were my GYN at the time. Yeah, that's right. And then you had started doing those surgeries. And um, so I just felt comfortable coming to you and asking you about it. Yeah. So we did our consult and even then you were like, you're fine. There's nothing that needs to be changed here. but. I still insisted that that was something I wanted to do. Yeah, so I think that's, a, to me, I think that's important that um, doctors explain that it is normal, right? So there's a big range of normal, just like breasts and noses, but we can choose to change it if we want to. So is that kind of what you Yeah, heard? and, and mm -hmm. yes, uh, yeah. you you were very good with, with me with that, explaining the surgery, explaining that it really wasn't something I had to have. Yeah. But, um, but my insecurities, and being uncomfortable in some of my clothes. I, I danced my whole life. I always wore tight clothing. I, and I think that kind of made things a little more worse down there. Yeah. So I just, I wanted to fix it. And, and ever since that fix, I've been totally different. I, I feel like it's really changed me. Yeah. Like, what are some ways that you feel different now? Um, you mentioned like in clothes, like in dance clothing or yeah, what, what like other in, in exercise, I feel more comfortable. I'm not like trying to adjust myself. Yeah. Um, same with, with, you know, intimacy. I feel more confident. Like this is me, like you're me, Lord. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. And I, I do think that that's something even, you know, in the back of my mind or, you know, subconsciously it was always there that I don't, I don't feel that anymore. I just do, I do feel different. I yeah. feel more confidence in myself. Nice. So just self-confidence, which is so important, isn't it, to the way we carry ourselves, I think, in all aspects of our lives. Yes, um, absolutely. We were just talking about that it's, that this is, um, you know, it's, no, it's normal. There's not something wrong with you that, that you have to get it fixed. It's just personal choice. Yeah. Yeah. So um, tell me about your experience kind of from beginning to end. You mentioned we'd actually met each other before because you were a patient of mine. Mm -hmm. So we had a relationship, but uh, once you started the investigating into the cosmetic surgery, what, what was that like um, kind of from beginning to end? It's been a little while, so do you remember the first consultation? Yeah, I, that one? I, um, I, I made an appointment with you and I, I came in for my consult. And at the consult, we, we talked about what I was uncomfortable with and what things I'd like to change. Um, and then after, you kind of like drew it out for me, like if you were to have surgery, which you don't absolutely need, but if you did, this is what I can do and this is what an idea of what you would look like. And I really liked what your ideas were for me. And then I made an appointment. And even through the process with the staff and filling out the billing and figuring out like what it, what it was that I was going to be doing, even with getting here to do the surgery and post-surgery, it was all very, it was very seamless. It was very easy. I, I wasn't scared to undergo the knife. Like, I always think I'd be scared to do that because I'm electing to yeah. put myself under, but I, I wasn't. I knew that was something I wanted to do. Yeah, that's great to have that confidence. Thank you. So, um, but what about the surgery center experience? Now, you went to sleep, which I do recommend. Uh, the patients are not awake for this because it's about an hour and a half. Do, Usually don't even remember that. I wonder if you remember anything about the surgery center. Um, I, well, I mean, I, I checked in. I remember checking in, and then I was in the pre-op area mm -hmm. awaiting surgery. I remember, you know, talking to the anesthesiologist before. He just kind of explained what the process was going to be mm -hmm. and how long I would be asleep, and if he would be there the whole time. And I remember trying to trying to count down from 100. I think I got to 99. That's literally all I remember. Yeah. So no no pain obviously during the procedure. No pain. What about when you woke up? When I woke up, um, there was no pain. Mm -hmm. um, you had told me you had used local anesthesia as well as the general anesthesia. Yeah. So I, I didn't have any pain. Um, I actually had my mom, she, she drove me home mm -hmm. 
from from Houston to New Orleans after surgery. That's right. And she lived out of town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I wasn't in pain mm -hmm. um, at all. Not after surgery. Yeah, so that local anesthetic usually lasts for a few hours, which is really nice to be able to get you home, especially if you live a long way away. Mm -hmm. like that's a that's a really nice feature. And then do you, do you remember the few days afterwards? Obviously, it starts hurting for a while. Like how, how would you rate the pain for someone who's considering having this done? You know, maybe 10 is the worst pain you can imagine, and one is just like a minor. I would say maybe like a, like a three or a four. Mm -hmm. um, it's more uncomfortable than anything. Yeah. It, that's the only word I could really use to explain it. I wasn't in pain. I was just uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, it only took a few days, though, before I was like going outside, walking around, doing everything I wanted to do. Yeah. I, I think it was maybe two or three days that I mm -hmm. was kind of icing ice in the area. Yeah. And I just kind of stayed home and, and took it easy. Yeah, and that's, that's perfect. That's what I always recommend, two or three days of kind of laying low with the ice and then after that you can move around but a couple of weeks of just light activities and then um, you probably remember the stitches all dissolve and that's yes. a really good feeling when they go away right yes that is. <laughs> so there's a lot of stitches and they go away about two weeks and then how long did it take before you felt like it looked like it does now for example it's final um, end point it I would say that it was it became beautiful again um, probably about two weeks because there was a little bit of swelling sure. um, because of that water and the stitches there but after that it, it was I was totally normal again yeah well and that's that's quick some patients even have swelling for up to six weeks but it's a really good thing to know it doesn't look perfect right away right you have to be a little bit patient so you have those patients but um, but putting you know ice in the area you know not doing anything too rigorous that that'll help yeah yeah, so there's a question that some patients have about whether this will improve my sexual function. And that's always really hard to answer because obviously we're not altering the, the clitoris or anything directly related to sex. But a lot of patients do say that it improves their sexual function. Like why, why do you think that is for some women? Or their, their libido or their kind I of I think you feeling. just feel sexier because you have confidence. Yeah. Um, also, like before with intimacy, it was, it was hard because I think there's a lot of rubbing happening on them, happening down there, and mm -hmm. it would irritate the skin. Yeah, some pulls and uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes. I think, I believe that to be true too. Like, we often joke that for women, libido is from the neck up and for men, it's from the waist down. Mm -hmm. So, how we feel about ourselves, whether it's like weight loss or even buying a new outfit, can make us feel sexier, right? Exactly. So, so I, I totally understand that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think saying that it improves our sexual function because of anything anatomic probably isn't true, but uh, that's an experience a lot of women have. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell someone who's maybe considering this or maybe is scared or embarrassed or has something that's holding them back from looking into to doing this surgery? I would absolutely recommend it. Absolutely, because I mean, that's, it's your body and you, or with your body every single day of your life. And if you're uncomfortable with something and you have the ability to change it, I don't see why not. And uh, this surgery, I mean, it's not like everyone's out there looking at my vagina. I mean, it's just my boyfriend, but I, I did it for myself. And right. um, just even the change within myself has also improved our relationship in a big way. Yeah, oh, that's really interesting. And I, you know, I, I probably told you and I tell a lot of people that I, I had twins and people often say I'm really thin, but I had a big fold of skin after they were born, so I had a tummy tuck. And I, I really relate to that feeling of everyone said you don't need it, and, but it was just for me. So now I can feel confident naked or I can feel confident in a swimsuit. It's really just for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, it's not like getting a, a facelift. It's not like getting something where anyone can really see it. It's, right. it's something from inside. Yeah. Um.